Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Imagineers Disney Podcast. I'm your host, Matt, and I have a very special guest with me today, my lovely wife, Rebecca. Hello, Rebecca. Hello, hello. So we are coming to you from Epcot, and we are going to be doing a walkthrough of the Epcot Food and Wine Festival. And we're really excited. Look at some new stuff. Look at some old stuff. Some returning favorites. But uh, we're going to take a walk. There are over 30 booths this year, so it is a crazy amount of food and beverages to choose from. Some returning favorites like the Chocolate Studio are back. One of my favorite desserts was the Nitro Chocolate. They uh, take some chocolate ganache and they dip it in nitroglycerin, then uh, put a caramel sauce on top. It's really good. I'm actually seeing people walk by it, walk by with us, with it in their hands right now. It looks amazing. Because it's kind of hot today. It's, uh, it's a little toasty, wouldn't you say? Yes, it is quite hot. I'm looking right now at what looks to be something that was not here last year. It is a pumpkin chai tea and chocolate shake. Ooh. For all you basics out there and the uh, pumpkin spice craze that is September. So yeah, that's something new to try this year for sure. If you are in the pumpkin fan <laughs> demographic. So we're actually walking up to the Canada booth for the festival, and this is where you can find the very, very popular Loiselier Wild Mushroom Beef Filet Mignon. Comes with a truffle butter sauce. I think this is the most expensive thing out of all the booths, but it's filet. So it's $8, and it is delicious. And you can also get the popular Canadian cheddar cheese and bacon soup. For $5, this is the same soup that you get at Le Cellier when you come sit down. And it actually comes with a pretzel roll that is perfect for dipping into the soup. I think I'm going to pass on the soup today because it is like a million degrees outside. So uh, we're going to keep on moving on. Then of course we are walking up to the France Pavilion. This is always a very, very popular booth every year. Uh, you have the options between escargot croissant and sandwich. I guess that's how you would describe that. Yeah, sure. A snail sandwich. That sounds <laughs> lovely. <laughs> and then they have a beer braised beef with bacon, onion, and mashed potatoes for six twenty-five. The escargot is actually five seventy-five. And then for dessert, they have a creme brulee with raspberry jam. Mm. I'm a creme brulee connoisseur, yes. so yes, he is. all of the creme brulees are my favorite. So, um, And then for beverages, you're going to have a selection. They have a Chardonnay, they have a Cabernet, they have a sparkling wine, and then they actually have a uh, martini slush that has passion fruit juice in it. So... Those are the big options from the France Pavilion. We are coming up to the Brazil Pavilion. I think we're going to try our first dish because this is, uh, I believe, a new one for this year. Uh, it is the moqueca. It's a Brazilian seafood stew uh, which has scallops, shrimp, white fish with coconut lime sauce and steamed rice. And then uh, I actually another really good one that I tried last year here is the crispy pork belly. So uh, if you are a bacon fan, this is like the best bacon ever. And it's served with black beans, tomato, and onions, and that is $5.75. And the uh, mokeka is $5.25. And then the Brazilian cheese bread is $4.25. So let's go try this uh, mokeka. Okay, so an executive decision was made, and the cheese bread is just too good not to pass up, so we are going to give that a try first. I mean, it's cheese and bread, and I'm not entirely sure how you messed that up. So, I knew this was going to be delicious. Very good. For those of you wondering, food and wine is really just me following my husband around Disney World, and I make him buy me snacks. This is true. It's a winner. Okay, so moving on to the mokeka, the seafood stew. So it once again has scallops, uh, shrimp, and whitefish, and then it has a cream sauce on top. So then it's served on a bed of rice. That's really good. Yeah, the sauce is nice and creamy. In honor of my favorite Brazilian. 
Camille, this is for you. It's delicious. You're Camille, well. we love you. And uh, next time you come down here, you should try this because it's really good. Oh, I see little baby shrimps. They are very small. But the fish is a good size, though. The fit, yeah. The fish is actually a nice large piece, and then the scallops and uh, shrimp are actually like baby. baby scallops and baby shrimps. I see some peppers in here. Yep, there's some peppers, and then I think it's cilantro on top. Mm -hmm. Very good. So yeah, it's a really fresh dish and like that's what i love about the festival is like you get so many different flavors like you have sweet you have sweet stuff but then you have like yeah. legitimately nice savory dishes like this yep. that really really go um, well with the ingredients just really combine well so this is a winner for sure check out this uh seafood stew at the brazil pavilion so I know that we just recently did a episode on our favorite quick services and Susie's favorite one is the Tangerine Cafe Morocco. Well, Morocco actually has a booth at the festival. It is great every year. So uh, if you like kefta, which is the seasoned ground beef, they have a kefta pita pocket and that runs $6. And then one of the best things, if you are a hummus fan, the hummus fries are incredible. Also chocolate baklava. And I know how much we've talked about how much we love baklava, so this one is actually a chocolate one. So his chocolate makes everything better. Yep. So we just uh, actually ran into Lou Mangello of the WDW Radio Podcast, fellow food enthusiast. But uh, got to give him a plug. An awesome guy, and he's been doing this. He's like one of the pioneers of, of Disney podcasts. So uh, also a really awesome podcast to go listen to. So go find him, Lou Mangello, WDW Radio. So we're actually entering a nice little area over near the, uh, the fountain towards the front of Epcot. And there's actually a cluster of booths here. There is Coastal Eats, there is Earth Eats, and Active Eats. So there's the unique menu for each one. And uh, stop at the Coastal Eats first. And if you are a seafood lover, this is going to be a great option. They have lump crab cake for five twenty-five, and they have a uh, baked shrimp scampi dip for five seventy-five, seared scallops for six dollars. So uh, great seafood options at this booth. Then over at Earth Eats, you're going to get more of uh, heartier options with they have a steakhouse blended burger so it's blended beef with wild mushroom and uh, brie cheese fondue arugula truffle and blue cheese potato chips and a brioche bun and then uh, they actually have another burger underneath that it's a, also another slider it's the impossible burger slider I'm not exactly sure what it is a vegetarian option yes okay so it looks like it is probably it's going to be a veggie burger and with mushrooms yes and then it's going to be served with wasabi cream and spicy asian slaw on a sesame seed bun so this is a vegetarian option and um, while we're at it so you're going to want to be looking for three different icons on each menu at these booths so the first one you want to be on the lookout for is the purple and white one uh, this is the Disney dining plan icon and what this means is if you were on the dining plan Any of these options that had that icon next to it count towards one of your snacks so We've said it in a previous podcast uh, The festivals at Epcot like food and wine and flower and garden um, Are really a, a nice way of using those credits especially if you want something different other than you know popcorn and Dole Whips. There's nothing wrong with Dole Whips, let me tell you. But uh, sometimes a unique thing like this, like the, the Steakhouse Blended Burger or, you know, the smoothies or the, you know, anything that we've tried today, all were available on those snacks credit options. Uh, it's going to be a good, a good alternative to use for those credits. The other icon is the Green V. 
So this is going to be your vegetarian options. So if you are on a vegetarian diet, these are vegetarian options that are good to try. And then the last one is your kid-friendly options. So you're actually going to see um, like a caricature of a strawberry. So these means that these are going to be really kid-friendly. So um, you know they're typically pretty standard stuff with like just like ground beef. I know over at the Brazil uh, Pavilion, the cheese bread. Yep, the cheese bread was was one of the options. I think actually over at Morocco, the uh, kefta pocket, the pita pocket with the ground beef was also one of the options as well. So those are the three icons you want to look for when you're making your way around the festival. Then speaking of those strawberry icons, uh, over at the Active Eats, there's a couple of options that are kid friendly. There's the loaded mac and cheese, which has uh, pepper bacon, cheddar, peppers, and green onions. And then there's actually an Active Eats energy bar bite which is a mixture of chocolate, nuts, dried fruit, and dates. So that is that actually has all three icons in front of it. So that uh, has the Disney Dining Plan snack icon. It has the vegetarian option and the strawberry option. Uh, and I actually failed to mention another little icon you need to be on the lookout for. Uh, there's the orange GF icon. That means that these items are gluten-free. So if you have a gluten intolerance or if you just eliminate gluten from your diet altogether, these are uh, safe for you to try at the festival. So a little further down the path, we have the flavors from Fire Booth. And then uh, I think this is what I'm going to get. I'm going to try. It's the charred chimichurri skirt steak. Uh, it is $6.75 and it is on a smoked corn cake with pickled vegetables, slaw, and cilantro aioli. And you guys don't know, but we're following our noses around here. The smells are just wonderful. I wish there was some way to let you smell them as yeah, we're talking about I, it because that's how we're making our decisions. I don't know if I'm smelling the wings or the skirt steak, but yeah, totally, totally going to try those. Um, and then there's actually also a dessert. It's a chocolate picante, uh, dark chocolate mousse with cayenne pepper, chili powder, and mango. Mm. So that might be a little too a little spicy. for me. A little spicy. So uh, that is three seventy-five. So if you are on the adventurous side, check that out. So I'm standing in line to actually get the skirt steak, and we have a guy actually at the grill grilling the steaks in front of us. And that's what the smell was. It, it brought us over here, so I cannot wait to try this. Okay, so let's try the uh, steak first because it smelled so good. At first glance, uh, I'd say portion size is actually very nice. Yeah. For the, for the price. That's a winner. That's actually a really good steak. That's a good skirt steak. Very nice. The, yeah. uh, the pickled vegetables are actually really good too. Mm-hmm, and the aioli is a nice addition. Uh, I can't remember what this cake is on the bottom. It's a corn cake. It's a little soggy. No, no, it's missing something. I was expecting a nice. It's not bad though. A nice cornbread to complement the rest of. I think overall it's really good. It's mm -hmm. a it's a great dish. I think the steak is like yeah, amazing. And then, like you said, the aioli adds a nice flavor to it. But um, this for sure is a solid solid option. So for our last stop, we are actually going to be heading towards the Festival Center. They actually have a couple of booths in there this year. And uh, as we're walking past, we are walking past the former Universe of Energy Pavilion. And uh, they uh, have completely removed the blue tiling off of the building facade that used to be there. Uh, but back behind the energy pavilion they are currently building the guardians of the galaxy roller coaster and coming into epcot we actually saw it on the bus and it's like good grief this thing is ginormous i mean we do know that it is going to be one of the largest indoor roller coasters in the world so uh really excited for that to be opening in hopefully the next 
year or so. As we walk past that, we are going into the festival center. And here you can have, this is where you're gonna have your seminars. This is where you're gonna have your festival shop, but also have a couple of options to try some food and beverages. Okay, so we are inside the former Wonders of Life Pavilion, where the festival center is. And our first stop is going to be the Shimmering Sips Mimosa Bar. So here you are going to find different mimosas. There's a tropical mimosa, there's a key lime mimosa, a blood orange mimosa, and a frozen mimosa, and Joffrey's cold brew coffee. But I'm actually here to try a new item. It is the frozen apple pie. So this is a kid-friendly drink. It is non-alcoholic. So uh, we're gonna give this a shot. I will also say that there are snack options at this booth as well. There's a chocolate croissant, uh, and then there is an almond croissant. They have a jumbo blueberry muffin and a cheese danish. All right, let's give this a shot. All right, here we go, here we go. It's good. So the, the drink itself, I was actually a little surprised. It's red. So I'm thinking apple pie. I'm thinking, okay, so it's going to be like a brownish type drink. But no, it is like apple red. And then it actually has uh, like a pie crumble on top and some apple streusel, streusel like puree pieces, pieces <laughs> on top. But yeah, it's actually pretty good. I think the red helps with the kid friendliness of it. It looks like something that kids would like. Very colorful drink. Mm -hmm. Slush. Yep. Dessert thing. thing. <laughs> Nice and sweet and refreshing. Especially since it's so hot outside. Yes, it's better. This is a it's nice. Hot outside. This is a nice cool down. Um, Come inside. It's AC. Walk around. Look at some fun things. Get a nice cool drink. Blood orange. Pretty good. Yeah. I would definitely try this again. It's a good reprieve for the rest of the day. As we move through the pavilion here for the festival center, uh, walk past the. Shimmering Sips booth. Uh, you actually have the craft brews area. So if you were looking for that in the Odyssey where it usually is held and you think that it has been removed from the festival, it is not. It is just in the festival center for this year. So that's where that is located. Also located in this area is the um, seminars. So if you have purchased tickets for one of the uh, food and beverage seminars it is right here in the festival center this is also where you can find all of your food and wine merchandise so they have t-shirts they have hats artwork they actually have mini ears that look actually look pretty cool it has a nice design on them it is like a rose gold and red and i'll actually have the picture posted in the show notes but it is a nice new mini ear design for the festival. Then you have uh, beer glasses, beer tumblers, and then you have Christmas ornaments. <coughs> Remy is also a big fixture inside the festival. So there's some Remy plushes. Uh, it looks like a Remy Christmas ornament. So uh, yeah, lots of shopping options in the festival center. Lastly, in the Festival Center, if you are a Walt Disney World annual pass holder, be sure to come by and pick up your pass holder magnet. So it looks exactly like the normal pass holder magnet with Mickey's face on it, except Mickey has a chef hat and it is on like a burgundy red background. So yeah, it looks really cool. So you can get that on your very first visit. And then on your fourth visit, you can get a pass holder cutting board. So those are the two pass holder perks for this year's festival. So I think that is actually going to wrap up our little venture into the food and wine festival today. I mean, we were here for a solid two hours and we only tried a couple of things. Yeah. I mean, we walked by everything, but we just kind of limited to what we were doing. We actually have a dining reservation that we have to go make. That's why we're cutting this off when we are, but yeah, I mean... It's not because we have self-control. It's because... We're getting more food. <laughs> uh, but the festival this year just looks really great. I mean, it is every year. 
and there's lots of new options there's returning favorites so like we said before in this discussion i mean use those dining credits to your advantage and use those snack credits for your snacks and uh, also be sure to go check out the eat to the beat concert series so your favorite bands will be playing nightly and have concerts three times a day and if you are looking to book your walt disney world vacation i am here to help you uh, my email is matt at imagineerspodcast.com just shoot me the dates you'd like to go and we'll get you set up so there's plenty of time to come to the food and wine festival it runs through mid-november this year it is in full swing now it started at the end of august it is easily one of the highlights every year at Epcot, and you should consider doing it on your next trip down here. If you have enjoyed listening to today's episode, be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and follow us on Facebook. We post every week the links to the episode and join on the discussion on all the episodes. But until next time, we hope you guys have a great week. Thank you for joining us again, and remember... If you can dream it, you can do it.